Segus. Hello. And I guess it's just us for today because I forgot we were recording and I guess messed up everybody else's schedules. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. I think I um, actually messed up everybody's schedule, but. <laughs> really? I mean, if you'd have said something sooner, I, I would have realized more along the time when we were supposed to record, <laughs> but. Yeah. But it's We're not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, we have we have lots to talk about. Um, it's been a while since it's just been the two of us on the podcast. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've been making tons of progress. I don't know how it how it feels for you, but um, oh, yeah. TJ's just been adding stuff to the game like crazy, and I've been. Um, all of my spare time just playing the builds that he gives me and, and telling him about bugs so it's yeah. been a lot of fun for me yeah i mean i was I, you know i was just playing so <laughs> <laughs> it's it's definitely like it's it's crazy seeing all the progress in it like it's it's going into hyper speed mode i feel like now yeah we have a lot of big things that we're adding right now so maybe it'll slow down again a little bit but uh yeah we have all the mobs are in the the first few dungeons now we don't have the the level 10 dungeon boss yet but everything else we have you know the glove and the rat have been in there the puke rat has been in there for a while but now we have sludgesaurus the blub and the uh rot bat yeah (laughs) yeah so yeah they're pretty neat like uh and and the other thing is up until last week they've always just been trash rarity and they've always pulled in like the lowest stats that they could have so now you can actually have like a blub that has like four thousand health on it (laughs) (laughs) that's that's gonna be intense Yeah, I haven't, I don't know if I've run into like a big Sludgesaurus yet and seen how much they can hit for. Um, Oh yeah, I did have one group where I had, I had a weapon that could only attack the first, you know, like the first enemy. So I didn't have any like AOE or anything yet. And I was just making do with like this rare weapon that I had. I think actually it's probably an uncommon weapon if it didn't have anything to target or AOE. But anyways, I had a blub in the front, uh, a big blub in the front, like a rare one, and then a bunch of Sludgesaurus behind it. And that's probably the only time that I actually lost was oh, wow. with those like hitting so hard and the blub tanking for them. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear my cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear. Oh gosh. Yeah, he, he got impatient. Alright. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's wonder well you can't hear mine more often. They like to like bang on the studio door. Oh in, so <laughs> But yeah, the the rot bats are flying around in the dungeons. They're actually in the dungeons now. When he first put them in, they would like drift off, uh, like and disappear off the side from oh, where they no. were supposed to be. <laughs> but we figured out that was something in the animation. So like, I guess your animation has like a root position, and yeah. if it doesn't return to the exact root position, then it can just like keep moving to the side of where it's uh, supposed to be gotcha so that's my layman's explanation of it yeah nike is not here to correct me so yeah i mean it makes sense kind of <laughs> <laughs> i know the basics of animation so i think i have an idea of what happens so, yeah <laughs> 
Yeah, I haven't seen the, I haven't gotten far enough to see the, the rot bats, but I'm looking forward to that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they show up around like Dungeon 7, I think. Because okay. it's, uh, you know, future dungeons that we add, like after launch or whatever, um, you'll probably get to see everything sooner. But because of the way you scale as a new player and, you know, just finding stuff, um, you kind of have to step it up where you just see the blubs and then you can add in the, the rat and then you can add in the blub and then the Sledgesaurus shows up and then the last one to show up is the Rot Bat. Gotcha. But by the time you're in dungeon level 10, where you'll spend most of your time grinding, then everything's in there, kind of in the, the rates that it should be. Gotcha. One of the other things that I don't know if you'll be able to tell or not, but it's made like a big difference um, for you know how things scale is we actually added in weapon power, which means that your weapons get more powerful as they're higher level. Because previously, if you had, say you had constitution or dexterity on your weapon, then you changed to a higher level weapon that had the same stat on it. So you didn't increase your strength, so your attacks didn't get any more powerful. Yeah, so like you would increase your mana cost by having a higher level weapon, but your weapon wouldn't actually get more powerful unless you increased your strength. Um, and you would probably increase your major stats, so if you had more dexterity from that higher level weapon, then you would attack more and it would work out. But if you had like um, constitution or karma on there, it would be less noticeable that you were like more powerful. But now the weapons actually level up the um, power, like the range of the attacks. So okay. when you get to level gotcha. 10 and get a level 10 weapon, it'll actually be almost twice as powerful as, you know, level 1 weapon at the same same thing. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's sort of hard to explain, and like players yeah. <laughs> don't actually see weapon power. Like it's not like a stat that's on the weapon. It's just kind of part of the level of the weapon. But yeah. it definitely makes a difference as you're, you know, leveling up through the dungeons and finding new weapons. Gotcha. It's one of those things. It's exciting for me to finally see it in because like. It was a problem that happened with my original design, and then I came up with a solution for it, and then I had to wait forever to get it in to see if it would actually work or not. Right. <laughs> gotcha. Um, I keep I keep teasing on these podcasts. I said it last podcast two weeks ago, but I really need to make a new video for everybody so that oh, yeah. they can see some of the new stuff that we're talking about on the show. But... uh. Yeah we actually have like bigger dungeons now too so they're they don't have your art in them yet but they're we've started the layout for you know making sure that the bigger dungeon size and more enemies will work yeah i'm actually really looking forward to like getting to drawing the dungeon but yeah i noticed the dungeon is like way bigger now <laughs> like i was wandering around i was like wait yeah, it used to only be like two rooms and like maybe four groups of enemies. And now yeah. I think he said there's 11 groups of enemies oh, wow. in the dungeon. <laughs> Which is probably, we'll probably leave it there. I, I wanted them to be like about 10 groups of enemies. So maybe yeah. it'll be like a range. Maybe it'll be like 9 to 11. Or something like right. that. But uh, a little behind the scenes, I guess. I mean, that's the point of the podcast, and, and we haven't actually talked about this yet, but the way the dungeons are going to work is um, everybody, like, most games have, like, procedurally generated dungeons or environments and stuff, but those kind of things take a lot of time to program, and they're not, like... At, they're not super interesting from a play like a gameplay standpoint at least for a game like ours because you just spawn into a dungeon you run around the dungeon and kill everything and what you care about is how tough the enemies are and what loot you get 
and yeah. you know if you're in the same room like it's not even something that most players pay attention to so yeah. the way that we're going to make our dungeons random but like not completely random is you know you'll have different rooms and stuff that you can move around to make different map layouts and then you'll have different points where you can spawn in on those map layouts and then you'll have different points where chests can spawn or enemies can spawn so you might have on a map say 25 positions where enemies could be and then you know as you load in it'll pick 10 of those for where the enemies will actually show up and then the same for chests there might be a dozen spots where chests could be but then you'll get you know say four or five of the actual chests that spawn in so it's kind of like a pseudo random thing where it's not gonna take a ton of time to like program some you know thing where it's actually like laying out the dungeon tiles but it'll feel pretty random and still use until you start like really paying attention or running it a hundred times right i'm gonna have to draw the dungeon in a way that it looks interesting but not too unique that it like stands out you know <laughs> yeah yeah like if you have the same thing like it'll you'll see it multiple times and stuff like i don't know like it to me like the dungeon layout isn't as long as it looks cool like i don't care if the level is the same each time or not and yeah i think we'll throw in enough stuff that things will be in unique positions and stuff that it'll look cool yeah you can always do like different formations of like where the lanterns and stuff are so thank you <laughs> oh yeah that's true we could probably make like random spawn points for like lights and puddles and um, yeah things exactly. like that yeah because i i planned on doing like those assets as like a separate object so they can be placed wherever and make sense like hopefully. yeah because <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't figure it just be the background you know there's going to be assets that will be in front of the player like like a column or something if they walk behind the column like that kind of thing <laughs> yeah exactly and there's probably could be like aspects of it animated too like you could have like a pipe dripping or something like that yeah yeah i'm sure Nika will have fun with the the particle effects and stuff. <laughs> nice glowing slime or something. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I was thinking about. Because it's like a sewer level, it doesn't really make sense to have like torches like we have now as the placeholders, but you still want to have a light source. So I think like glowing puddles or something would be cool. Yeah, because like open flame in a sewer I don't know if that's a good idea <laughs> yeah true <laughs> all that methane <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it is magical in nature so who knows maybe it's a magical flame <laughs> magic torches yeah that's true yeah I mean there can be all sorts of things that can light up in a weird dungeon -y sewer thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. You could almost, like, I don't know, like, light bulbs would look out of place, but, like, you can have, like, fantasy light bulbs or something, too. Yeah, where they're yeah. Just glowing things. Yeah. Like uh, a lantern or a, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, lanterns is a good idea, too, and it's kind of enclosed. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's going to look good. I, I can't wait. Like, all the, the art assets getting added in is... Probably, like, I know that I'm excited by everything that happens, but I think the <laughs> art getting loaded in is one of the most exciting things. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting for like, me, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were looking at it earlier, like, the, the new, um, I, I guess this is another, like, behind-the-scenes thing for, for people, but, like, the way you originally drew and formatted all of the artwork wasn't loading in, um... I don't want to say correctly but like uh tj was gonna have to take each piece and like put it in manually so that it loaded in in the right spot 
So now you've gone back and started um, resizing canvases and things so that TJ can just load them in and then future things that you draw will just load in in the right spot too. So um, you got the bodies done and we were just looking at, at them in game and how good they look. So excited about it. <laughs> it's it's such a simple thing, but it's such a huge thing at the same time. Because like I've been, I mean, we've been spending so much time getting all the armor and weapons and everything like in like drawn and in there, you know. So it's it's nice actually seeing it on the the character. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple more things like that. Like we have all the the loot and stuff that needs to go in the gear, but there's actually like a bunch of like probably half of the player creator assets didn't haven't been loaded in yet too. So I'm excited to be able to have like the different underwear and the, um, oh, yeah. I think eyes. Who can't change the eyes yet either? Yeah, I don't think so. I didn't check when I just. <laughs> I was just excited to see the armor and stuff. Yeah, because, yeah, I remember there was, like, very limited options thus far for the the character creator. I mean, there's yeah, I think... more than when we first started, but yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think all the hair and, like, the mouths are in, but we don't have yeah. eyes or um, things like that. We need yeah. to get more like skin tones and stuff like that, and take oh, yeah. out the blue <laughs> skin tone. So. <laughs> I like but uh, the I'm blue trying though. not to overload. <laughs> <laughs> See, I want I want all of like real life skin tones to be available in the character creator, but then yeah. you know the extra like weird colors are gonna be available in other ways. You know, I don't right, want them right. in the original character gotcha. creator <laughs> so yeah we'll have blue and red and green eventually but like for now i just want to focus on getting all of the real life skin tones in yeah probably the top priority <laughs> yeah yeah right now we've been focused on like gameplay getting all the mechanics working and right. now we've moved on to like getting art and menus and things working the way they're supposed to like the tool tips and stuff will be one of the next things that, oh, that yeah. we get now that i'm excited to see your your borders for items because like each item kind of has like in the inventory it'll have like a frame around it so you know right away which rarity it is and I'm, I'm excited to see those too yeah I'm coming up with ideas as I I think about it, like <laughs> just ways to make it look a little like. I mean, obviously, like I want the like legendary and stuff to look more impressive than like the trash, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, so I'll figure it out. I'm sure I'll look good in that. <laughs> I mean, I, it's just the two of us, and we don't have to stay too long for the podcast, but um, I can't think of anything else. We've covered everything that I made <laughs> on the, the quick list, um, yeah. so unless you have anything else that you wanted to um, talk about. No, I think that covers most of what's going on so far. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We, we've we've kind of already covered like what you're working on so, since you're resizing and stuff but we should bring yeah. back the what are you working on right now <laughs> um for me i had to i've been spending a lot of time because we've actually come up on a year since we started everything you know we started in july last year and yeah. now it's it's august 4th so we've made a full year of actually working on the game and stuff and and since i started the website and things like that so <laughs> it's kind of weird but like when you're online you know how it has the green lock up in the search bar or the address uh, bar like oh, on yeah, certain yeah. sites like the yeah. security lock so that you know you're not on some sketchy site that yeah. is actually an incredibly difficult and like like obtuse like, like I don't know how to describe it. it's just so hard to figure out how to do that and you have to renew it every year so I remember oh, yeah. last year trying to figure out how to get that thing on there so that our site was secure 
and then I, I had to do it again and it's so difficult like they give you all the information that you need but it's like pages of like options and and like if this then then your your site's this and if it's not then your site's this it's like you know maybe some people understand it better and it's they're making it more difficult than it needs to be but it's taking me a while to uh, get that figured out you have to like generate a code then you have to input the code somewhere and like verify it and then once it's verified it gives you a different code that you put in in another place it's it's so crazy oh wow I didn't realize that was such an issue <laughs> yeah yeah it's it, like I, I don't know like i think maybe if i had like different hosting they do it for you somehow but like the hosting uh, that i have is fairly inexpensive so maybe like that's part of it but maybe not because i remember my old site for um for electric type which is a old music project I used to have. That site would get hacked and have like Viagra ads at the top of it all the time. Jeez. I eventually like just gave up on it. And then um, what did happen? Oh yeah, GoDaddy was what I was hosting it with. And they contacted me and told me that my site was like compromised. And then if I didn't change it, they were gonna charge me like hundreds of dollars to like clean it or delete it or whatever they were gonna do and I was like okay so I just like deleted everything and I moved to like hosting my sites on tumblr and so all of my projects are hosted on tumblr because they they (laughs) handle all the security and stuff and you just link to it with your domain name but until we needed an actual site for knobcat then I was like I had to look up all the security stuff and try to figure it out. Gotcha. It's pretty wild. I didn't even think about how much of a hassle that must be. <laughs> yeah, stuff it's. That I, I think. I think a lot of like game companies, you know, like they're they don't have like a person like me that's you know handling just all the random aspects, and then they usually have to like assign those off to each other or whatever but like right. since i'm handling all of that stuff and trying to you know, <laughs> try to make your guys job as easy as possible so you can just focus on kind of the funner creative part of it <laughs> yeah we appreciate that you're doing all that work <laughs> that's for sure yeah my job is to make your guys job as easy as possible Fair. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. So let's go ahead and wrap up this show. It ended up being a little longer than I expected anyways. But <laughs> if you've made it the whole way through, you're interested in Dungeons of the Obelisk, but you're not on our Discord somehow, go to knobcat.com, find the link to the Discord, say hello to us in there. Um, I'm always in there answering questions and stuff whenever they come up. Um, and then that's also the place where you first get notified about everything cool that happens and the video that I promise I'm going to make. I'm going to try to get that done this week. So new video, <laughs> hopefully. And uh, what else? You can uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Dungeons Obelisk. Nike has been doing a good job of upgrade, updating the, uh, the Instagram and then I retweet things and stuff on, on Twitter. But but yeah, everybody, knobcat.com, and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye.